Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the last day of this half term, 30 the 15th of October. This assembly that I'm going to present to you today is based around the theme of happiness. Now, our vision here at the Academy is to have an inclusive learning community, which you will know, in which we enable all students to aspire, create and excel. We want you to become the future leaders in your field and we want to equip you with those skills, attributes and attitudes to become successful and happy lifelong learners. Now the word in there is happy and what does happiness mean? I've spoken a lot in letters to your parents this term, and my introduction letter when I took the role as head of secondary here at the academy about how I feel that happiness can equate to those outcomes as academic outcomes. So what I want to talk to you today about is what is happiness and why is it so important? Why do we choose to be happy? Now happiness might be lovely unicorns and colours and things that make you feel like uh, you're happy in your in your life, in your bedrooms, in your friend chats, in everything that you do when you're sending those little gifts to each other. But it also might be you being on the football pitch or playing sport that gives you that adrenaline rush that makes you feel truly fulfilled and truly happy. It might be your friends. It might be those people around you that put a smile on your face and your family. So when you come into school in the morning, obviously at the moment we're wearing the mask, so it's quite hard to see if somebody is smiling. But it's about having those relationships and those interactions with your peers and with your family. But more importantly, why is it so important? So it seems like a really, really odd question to ask. Um, what is happiness? So. If, do you know how to define happiness? Do you think happiness is the same thing to you as it is to others? And what's the point of it all? Does it even make a difference in our lives? Well, in fact, happiness does have a pretty important role in our lives and it can have a huge impact on the way we live our lives. And although researchers have yet to pin down a proper definition or even agreed on a framework for happiness, there's a lot that has been learned in the last few decades. And one of those main things is the link between happiness, motivation, and in turn, how that can align with educational outcomes and success. So the dictionary definition for happiness is a simple one. It just says the state of being happy. That's not exactly helpful, is it really, when we're thinking about what it means to be happy, to find that definition and to see where we fit into it. So, Looking a little bit deeper than, than this, when I was doing some research for this assembly, these are three of the things that I found about what is happiness. So happiness is a state. It's not a trait. And in other words, it isn't a long last, lasting or permanent feature, or it's not even a personality trait. It's more of a fleeting, changeable state. Happiness is equated with a feeling of pleasure or contentment. And meaning that happiness is not to be confused with joy, ecstasy or bliss or other more intense feelings. And thirdly, happiness can either be a feeling or showing meaning that happiness is not necessarily an internal or an external experience, but it can be both. In today's modern age, happiness is usually equated to materialism. So the more that you have, the more we expect you to be happy. It's completely untrue. And if it were the case that people with lots of money were actually really, really happier than the average person, we wouldn't have so many celebs going completely crazy. The truth is that money and materialism and the gathering of lots of different items means nothing. It literally has no impact on our well-being. Yes, we do need money to get by. Yes, we do need to eat food. So there is a reason why finances have a level of importance in our life. But actually, aside from keeping us warm and making sure that we've got enough food to eat, we don't really need anything else. Everything else is just things that we are told we should want, things that we're advised to get for our happiness. And that's a real shame because in striving to achieve those goals, we often put at risk our relationships increase our stress levels and wonder why, in spite of the fact that we've got our new car or our house is getting done up, we don't actually feel that happy. Creating a wealth complex is about understanding the key components of happiness. That means our close relationships and our aspirations for what we want to achieve in our life. And I mean that away from materials. I mean that away from getting an extra big wage rise. 
I'm talking about what you can really do to enhance your life. First of all, it's about making sure that you're looking after the relationships closest to you. They are the things that make you happy. And realising that if you've got significant people in your world who love you and care for you, then you are already so much more wealthy than many people in this world. So, how do we achieve it? So, where do many people go wrong? Well, people try to maximise their money. They try to maximise their possessions. They're interested in their expensive holidays. And all of these things are all well and good. But does that truly mean that you are fulfilled and you are happy? What do some people get right? They give. They invest in people and relationships and the people around them. And they value the experiences that they create with those friends and family. And one of the things that we've learned over the last six, seven months since lockdown and, and the way that the world has changed, we know that the value of those experiences are outweighing anything that money can buy. We know that people and relationships are really important. And if you're like me and you, you've been missing your family, you haven't had the opportunity to go home and to travel and just to see people that you truly care about, suddenly you realise just how important those people are in your life and how significant that is to your happiness. So one of the things that we're looking at this term and actually this year, is the high performance learning framework. You're going to see more and more of this in your lessons, but it's more than just learning about what it means to analyse or to create or to link things together or even meta thinking. It becomes more than that. It's about attitudes and behaviours and how we can attribute that to our academic outcomes through the personal way that we interact with our learning. So, Two of the things that we're going to look at this term is about how we behave. And we're going to look at what it means to be resilient. And we're going to look at what it means to reflect. And that all comes under the hard working logo for um, high performance learning. So we understand maybe what it is to be realistic. But actually, do we know how to apply that to our own thinking and our own understanding of what that means in our lives? And that links to meta thinking terminology. All of this links in to the way that we can start to look at our behaviours and how that makes us happy. So what is resilience? So resilience is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity. Now we all know that we have had to face up to a lot of adversity over the last six, seven months and have we actually stepped back and started to think about and reflect on how we got through that? What was it that guided us through those times to where we are now? We are very resilient. We're back in school now as well. And even though we're back in school with the masks on our face and we're being told to socially distance and we have to sit separately from our friends, we're still here. And actually having those relationships and talking to people around the school, staff and students, we know how important and how significant that is to be able to have you all back in school with us. And those of you that are on remote learning, it's about thinking about the way that we are interacting with our peers still and our family. And you can still have access to your education, but just in a very different way. And if that's what truly makes you happy, then we very much welcome it. So to be resilient, it means to bounce back from difficult experiences and not just bounce back, but to learn from them as well. So have a little thing, a little reflection time about what it means for you personally to bounce back from difficult experiences what have you learned about yourself over the last six or seven months reflection is really important in our uh, pursuit of happiness because it means that we are applying what we've learned to context beyond the original situations in which we learned that something so for example if you have learned um, what it means to be uh, resilient in these hard times and be at home in your bedroom and have to adapt to uh, the new norm, shall we say, of when you were doing the remote learning, what did you take from that? What did you then bring back into school? Was it the way that you organised yourself? Was it your routines? Was it you learned something about the way that you enjoyed to learn? Reflect on that. Take time to think about how you could move that forward. Reflection helps us to be in control of everything around us. So if you are quick to anger or you get irritated or you like to blame other people before you start to think about the way that you are approaching the situation, take a step back, 
and just have a little reflection time on what it means to be back in control of that situation. Even if it's something that you've done wrong, you can still reflect on it and you can still gain control. This video isn't about anything in particular. Really, it's just about reflecting on the past few months and using that experience to tell you what I've learned. Because I think that even as a practitioner, I'm always blown away by how often you kind of tread water and you think you're learning and you think you're growing and you think you're developing and then something hits you, bam, and all of a sudden it gives you a moment to really take stock. The last three months have brought a host of experiences emotionally, physically, economically. They've provided me with moments of deep sadness, of resentment, of frustration, of anger. They've made me rethink my family structure. They've made me worry about my capacity to cope. And it's also been a time of gestation because as one state of being in life ends, a new one evolves, sometimes unconsciously. As opposed to finding devastation and wreckage, actually what you find are little trinkets of treasure that if you're willing to explore really can help you to grow. So, just to finish up today, we're just gonna go back to our vision. I spoke at the beginning about us wanting to aspire, create and excel, ACE. That's one of the strap lines that we have here at Wellington Academy El Kale. We want you to be the future leaders in your field. We want to equip you with skills, attributes and attitudes to become successful and happy lifelong learners. As we move forward this term, I want us to be reflecting on those skills and those attributes and our attitudes of how we're going to be happy at school and happy in our lives outside of these walls. Your teachers are here to nurture you and to help you to achieve academically, but it's more than that. We also want you to be the very best version of yourself. So when you leave this school and you go on to wherever you're gonna go in the world, at whatever point in your academic career that you're going to leave us, we want to know that we've done our very best by you and you've done your very best by us in order to find that happiness and to have that love and that understanding of what it means to be a lifelong learner. Happiness is something, as I said at the beginning, that is quite hard to put our fingers on about what it means to be truly happy. The dex Dictionary definition doesn't really help us when it says that happiness is the state of being happy. But we're starting to think about now, we're starting to think about this term and as we move forward over this next academic year, and we don't really know what the future holds for us in regards to examinations and what they're gonna be looking for this year. We had our whole world turned on our heads back in March. But one thing we do know is that we are here together You've chosen to come to Wellington Academy El Kale, and we're going to move forward together this term. Happiness is a state. It's not a trait. It isn't a long term lasting permanent feature. It's about finding our way through that. And we can find that through our internal and our external experiences with others in the way that we are shaping ourselves this term and for the future moving forward. So I wish you a truly happy and fulfilled half term break. I am very happy to be here. As I said at the beginning of this academic year, I was truly excited to take this role at the academy and it is absolutely living up to everything that I thought it would be and more. I want to thank you for making me feel so welcome and for showing me just what a special place this school is. And I also want to thank your teachers and your TAs and your LSAs and your admin support and the facilities team who are doing everything they can to make your lives here on a daily basis at the Academy truly happy and fulfilled. Have a wonderful half-term break and I will see you on the other side.